Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you like what we do here and you want us to continue to pump out this great content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Also follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Your support will go a long way. We also want to send out a big thanks to our sponsors. Are you looking to buy or sell your home? Working with Alessandro Divino of Compass is the right move. Visit AlessandroDivinoHomes.com today and feel the difference of working with a realtor that puts you first. And by ASF Sports and Outdoors, located at 1560 East Post Road, ASF is your community hub for all your sporting goods. And also something new, uh, the next episode we will be handing out the prize for Student Athlete of the Month. So make sure you stay with us next week so you can catch out the winner. And now, let's go over to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Prep Zone podcast. Uh, my guest today is Matthew Cruz. Hey, Matt, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Coach Matt, uh, as you can see by the shirt, played vo- volleyball at Endicott College. Uh, he won three NECC championships and was uh, uh, all sportsmanship team in 2022. Yeah. Uh, native of Eastern Connecticut, uh, and he's fresh off an undefeated state title with Darien High School Boys Volleyball. I followed that, and I know that was an incredible run you guys had. Oh, yeah, no, it was sensational. It was uh, it was awesome being a part of that. For sure. And, you know, and you have obviously coached at the club, club level as well, so, uh, you know, sports all over all over your DNA. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Matt, you know, I wanted to uh, get right off the bat here. Uh, the, the episode today, we really want to talk a little bit about the college recruiting. And you did, uh, you played uh, college sports. And can you just start with, um, how did the process start? What's the first thing you remember about the college recruiting process? Um, well, the first thing I remember is probably back in, uh, I would say sophomore year, I started getting contacted by coaches, like not directly, but like they would give my coach like their card and be like, oh, we're interested. But um, I think for the NCAA rules, they were not allowed to contact you until after your sophomore year. Mm-hmm. So during my junior year is when they started contacting me, coaches here and there. And then nationals is when it really blew up where, you know, you're actively messaging coaches, trying to get um, trying to get looks and, you know, just trying to get recruited. So it, if I, when you're talking about messaging, getting recruited, is this something, does the process include a lot of you actually going out there and reaching to the colleges? Is that what happens to you? Yeah, very, very proactively. Um, there, there were some coaches that reached out to me. I remember the first school that reached out to me was um, actually Albertus Magnus in uh, Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. No, very no, small yeah. school. Uh-huh. Um, so that was kind of cool, but obviously I would never, I would not obviously, but <laughs> I was not really considering it. Sure. Um, but... I, you know, it's cool, but uh, I would say the better schools that were like, oh, yeah, like we'll have a roster spot for you if you came to our school, um, those were the ones I was reaching out to. And when you talk about, uh, you no know, hat, when they mention having a roster spot for you, can you expand on that? What does that mean? So, for example, um, when I was getting recruited from uh, Springfield College, which is like a really, really high um, Division three program. Um, they told me, it was like, it's pretty cutthroat over there, but they said like, oh, I'll have a roster spot for you for one year. But then after that, like you have to earn your spot and we, we could come, we could bring in a kid and you'd be cut from the team. And I'm just like, okay, cool. But, <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's uh, just how uh, it goes sometimes. So, like, yeah. it, and so that spot really was just a spot to play and be a student. Uh, was it like based on academics? scholarships how, how was that so for the division three level how it mostly works is it's just academics there's no academic scholarship um or athletic scholarship mm-hmm. sorry um for the athletic scholarship ones those are only for division two and three or division two and one mm-hmm. um i did get a few division two scholarship opportunities but i, I didn't decide to uh, go to those schools because their schools kind of were not very good so so yeah so you look not only at at, at a at Athletics, but also academics was a big part of it. You have to, you have to, because, you know, at the end of the day, volleyball or any sport you go into, it isn't going to be your life um, at the end of the day. Even though I do enjoy coaching, I, I don't, it's not my full-time job, so. Uh, but you, it's funny you mention it, because that's kind of the reality that you need to accept early on, right? Yeah. I mean, as a, as a, as an, a person, you need to say, you know, this is helping me stand out for sure to get to get a good education. But I need to think long term in my life here, right? I mean, is that how he kind of approached all yeah, of that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
when I chose Endica, I didn't choose Endica because they were a good volleyball pro- program, even though they were. Um, it was because I really liked the school and I really like, I could really see myself there. It wasn't for any other reason. Okay, so now they've given you a roster spot. You've talked to the coaches. You went through the whole process. You kind of, you know, you, 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 you put yourself out there. What is a day-to-day like in a college, on, on a Division three college athlete? What's that day-to-day practice, training, academics, talk in college life? Talk to me about how that goes. Well, it depends whether you're in season or out of season. When you're out of season, you have a lot of downtime. Um, you have, you know, workout sessions. They can range from, you know, 6 a.m. workout session for like an hour, hour and a half. Um, we, have, we do have a bit of a fall ball season, which is like you're practicing like four or five times a week, two hour practices. Um, so, yeah, but then when you're out of season, though, usually it's just captain's practices trying to get reps. Um, but when you're in season, it's it's a grind. I mean, you really have no downtime to be doing anything. It's like it's work. It's schoolwork whenever you have downtime and then you're just in the gym working on for, for, for volleyball, you're traveling for games. Um, you just, it's, it, it can get pretty hectic at times. And, and I, I've heard that before, right? It's, it's like, it's, you don't have a, during the season, it's really no downtime. You're yeah. going through from practice to, you know, to do all that stuff. And how do you, how do you, how do you balance that? I mean, cause just going to college alone is already a big change. Right, you're out on your own for the first time. You're you're, you're trying to get new friends. You're doing all that. How how, how do you balance that? It, it's really hard. Let me tell you. Um, I mean, I'm a I was a computer science major in college, so like STEM. I was, I was super jealous of my business. My business friends, like they had like no work at the time. They could still mess around even if when, even when they were in season. But for me, I it was horrible at times. Like. One semester I had like four final projects while in season and I just, it's a grind. It really is like you have no social life at times when you're in season, but um, you just have to make the most of it and just realize it's not forever. And, uh, yeah. and, but looking back at it, would you change your experience in college? No, absolutely not. No, it made me the person I am today and I would never, I would never change a single thing I did. Yeah, because it's like, you know, it, it's great you say that. Because, you know, you talked about the grind and not having this, that, but you always sacrifice for something greater, right? And I think when you're part of a team, you're looking at something greater than yourself. And that's important. Yeah, no, those, those relationships I built over those years are going to last, last the rest of my life. And uh, it was just, it was just amazing to be a part of. So as you, you know, we're talking to, you know, to an audience here that is looking at this podcast and thinking, well, you know, I... I really want to go to good college. I really want to play in college. Um, what is the first advice you'd say, you know, start the process early, put yourself out there. What do you think or, you know, would you say to someone who's really looking to get in that process? I would say, um, you know, you could get really hung up on getting recruited and all that sort of thing. Um, but I think the main thing is just working on your skills and your academics. I mean, there, there were a lot of schools, not a lot, but there were a few schools which I would love to go to, one being like Stevens Tech in uh, New Jersey. And they reached out to me like, oh, we're really interested in you, yada, yada, yada. But I'm like, I do not have the grades to get into that school. Like, mm-hmm. It was like, I forgot what it was at the time, but it was like a maybe a four or three, nine or something. I had like a three, two mm-hmm. high school. I'm like, I'm sorry, I cannot get in. <laughs> so I would say academics, you know, being an academic weapon and just um, going to town, making sure you get those A's and B's, mostly A's. Um, and then, um, you know, once you have the good grades and you have the skills, then it should be easy to get recruited. Yeah, it it's funny to say easy because it seems to me like a lot of kids are that want to do that struggle to stand out. Mm-hmm. Was there anything in particular that you did, be it like on, on I don't know, uh, social media, on the contacts with coach that you did to stand yourself out? Um. I mean, I made a highlight tape of myself, and I um, I think that's the main thing. When you when you reach out to when you reach out to college coaches, you know, you're not reaching out to a scout or anything like that. You're reaching out to the coach directly most of the time, ninety percent of the time, and they don't really have time to, you know, look at your, you know, look at your stats, all that stuff. It's good to give them a highlight tape at least for them to get a sense of it. And you have to make sure it's pretty well organized. You know, I had mine organized with like uh, serving, and then. 
offensive clips and then just defensive clips for blocking for volleyball. Um, you know, you don't want to waste their time and just being respectful um, goes a long way. And when you're reaching out, are you giving the, the, the tapes of playing along with grades or are you just at that point just really going on the sport itself, not academic? Uh, I would say, yeah, effort. I mean, you can give the whole picture of like your grades and all that. I think for some of, some of the coaches I reached out to, I did both, but, um, mostly to start, I just did, um, just only the skills. Only the skills. Did you find that most coaches were responsive? Like they were always reached out back, back to you either with a yay or nay, but always. Yeah. I would say, yeah, they're, they're pretty responsive. Um, at least when I, cause it was funny. So I contacted them, most of the co coaches, the day before my junior year nationals. Like it was like I was in, where was it? I was in Dallas. Was it Dallas? No, Columbus. I was okay. in Columbus and I'm like in my hotel room and I just finished the video, like editing it up and like downloading it. And I was like, I need to send this out to people. Like I need yeah. to, I'm trying to go into college. So uh, I just like sent it out to like 10 coaches and I would say like, and I, and I gave them times like, oh, I'll be on this court tomorrow between this time and this time, please come check me, play, like watch me play in person. And that helped out a lot. Cause when you go to nationals, all the coaches are there. Mm -hmm. um, so I had like, like Charlie Sullivan come out, who's the Springfield college coach. And uh, you know, the pressure's on at that point, you know, yeah. you have to perform if they're watching in person, you have to perform and, or else they're just going to be like, yeah, nah, like we're good. You know what I love about everything I'm hearing from you is that it's, I've always felt like being recruited is something you just sit back and let it happen. From your case, it seems like you went after it. No, oh, no, you do. You have to, you have to, if, that, if that's what you want to do. I knew from like a really like early age, um, I want to play a college sport, whether that's volleyball or basketball or whatever. Um, and you know, I want to make it happen. So I did that. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I at least I, I hope our listeners are as encouraged as I am because it seems to, like anything in life, you, you get you get out of it what you put into it, and it seems like you really went out to get it. Yeah. No. So so that that to me is really good, and now I just want to touch a little bit more. You 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 talked a couple of times. You mentioned nationals, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of means let's just say someone who right now is just playing high school, but when you mention nationals. You're talking about a club team or academy that you, you, you pair up with to get to go to these tournaments. Is that is that the path? Right, yeah, the club team. Um, I would say most people, at least for volleyball specific, um, who go play in college, they all play club ball at a high level before they, um, you know, played in college. I've only met one person who didn't play club. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's unheard rare. of. Really. <laughs> yeah. It's rare. It's rare to just get picked, get recruited just from high school because high school ball kind of, you know, it kind of stinks. Like it's not very competitive. People don't really take it seriously. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I think it, in the sport, like volleyball it happens, right? Cause you get some people who are, are there for that, but it, it's, at least it's a means you have to do it, but you do it, but you, to get to that club level to where you can do all that. But it, so as, as, as a final thing here, when you look back at all your recruiting and all the process you went through, is there anything that you would do differently to maybe better your chances? Um, there's probably a few things I would do differently. I would probably start working more on my body earlier at a younger age, like probably junior, going into my junior year, I'd probably start doing like plyometrics and just try increasing my vertical. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's like the biggest thing, you know, when these D1 coaches like when they get back to you and they're like okay send me your reach vert send your vertical send me all this like information about your not your playing but your you, you know your, your attributes, body, yeah. your body pretty much and if you don't make a certain level then they're just like oh sorry we have a max out recruiting class like you know that's just how it goes um really like that so i would start training like that mm -hmm. earlier and then not only that but i think there are some there were some instances where i probably should have heard out a coach a recruiter um more um i had a one one school reach out to me which was an naia school which is you know you have the ncaa and then mm -hmm. you have the naia and this school was i didn't realize at the time was transitioning to go to the ncaa's and mm -hmm. they were they were recruiting me and they were going to be division one in ncaa so i was just like no i'm good i'm all set and then I would have, I would have been, not that I would have been, but uh -huh. I was already committed at that point to Endicott. Uh -huh. 
I could have switched up, but yeah. Yeah, but you just never know, right? Yeah, you just never know what the situation is until you hear them out, so. so yeah, uh, leave no stone unturned, yeah, right? Exactly. You, you, you go through everything like that. But, you know, um, it's been absolute pleasure to have you on. I mean, I thank you. You've been, you shared so much information. Hopefully we'll, you know, we'll have you on again to go deep and everything. But um, I do want to hand, we always end with uh, some quick hits uh, to get the audience to learn a little bit more about, you know, Matthew, the, the person versus the, you know, the college player. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You just, uh, a few questions. You just give me uh, what comes to mind. Okay. All right. Your favorite Tom Hanks movie. Ooh. Ugh. Um... That's a tough one. I don't know. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Morning person or night owl? Oh, I'm a night owl. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Texting or calling? Oh, calling. Introvert or extrovert? I would say I'm an introvert. Spring or fall? Fall. Fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. Beach or sightseeing? Beach. Sweet or salty? Salty. Burger or tacos? Ooh, Burger. What is your hidden talent or skill? Oh, hidden talent or skill? Um, I'm not sure if I have one. I'm colorblind, but that's not really a hidden talent. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that it's everybody... Something. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. All right. And if you could have lunch with any historical figure, dead or alive, who would it be? Ooh, ooh. Um, I would say, I don't know. I don't know. Steve Jobs. If you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? Um, I don't know. And and all war. Love that. Matthew, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate it and hope to have you again soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me.